Welcome to Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures League, presented by ChangeUp. I'm Owen Shadrick. It was a great week for Futures League Baseball at the 2022 All-Star Game. We'll get into that in a minute. Before we do that, we want to give you another standings update here. The top four teams remain the same as they did last week, just in a different order. Vermont Lake Monsters are on top, have clinched a playoff spot officially, so congratulations to them. They are well on their way to potentially clinching the one seed as well. We'll see how that unfolds in the next couple of days. The New Britain Bees are in second place, the National Silver Knights in third, and the Westfield Starfires and Norwich Sea Unicorns tied for fourth. But the Pittsfield Suns are only a game and a half back. It's going to be a great race to the finish line here in the league. We also, As I mentioned off the top, we had a great all-star game this week. want to thank the New Britain Bees, Brett DeRosa and Brad Smith, for an unbelievable show for the second year in a row. The day started with the home run derby, which was won by Cameron Maldonado over Cam Seymour. He wins the first ever championship belt for the home run derby. Then it was to our all-star game where Team Goldstein defeated Team Laura 9 to nothing. The MVP of the all-star game was Jake Marquez, who went one for one with three RBIs. Jake from the Worcester Braveheart, so congratulations to him on winning MVP. The captain of Team Goldstein, George Goldstein, ended up coming in for the ninth to close the game out, and the stealing base king of the Futures League, Joel Lara, ended up tacking one on to his all-star game stats. So it was great to see the captains showing out in the all-star game. But Team Goldstein got them to win 9-0. The most outstanding pitcher in that game was Sean Matson, who was our guest today on Back to the Futures. Sean talks about his time with the red-hot Vermont Lake Monsters coming off of the season at Harvard, being a potential two-way player for the near future, and much more. It's an interview you don't want to miss, and we're going to get you there. Here is Sean Matson. We are honored to be joined by our next guest here on Back to the Futures. He was just named the most outstanding pitcher at the 2022 Futures League All-Star Game, was also the May-June Pitcher of the Month. It's Sean Matson of the Vermont Lake Monsters. Sean, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on this. Of course. And to kick us off here, you guys have, an inc- have had an incredible year. You clinched a playoff spot already and are pretty close to grabbing that first place spot. What's it been like to be a major part of that at the top of the rotation? It's been amazing. Um, from day one, the guys, everybody clicked. And uh, I think we started off on a rough Rough start and uh, three games, lost the first three games we played. But then after that, it all started flowing and all the guys started coming together and the team started coming together and it's been amazing. And uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. It's been, it's been amazing pitching to some of the best catchers in the league and pitching under the best coaches in the league. So I've, I've had a good time. And I mentioned it off the top of the show, you were just named our 2022 Futures League All-Star Game Most Outstanding Pitcher. We'll get to the specifics of Team Goldstein, which is fun in a minute. But generally, what was it like to start that game and receive the honor of being the starting pitcher for Team Goldstein? It was amazing. Um, it was really cool when George told me that he had drafted me one. And um, it was really exciting, honestly. And I just, I just had a great time. The guys were all super supportive, even though we're all from different teams. And I got to meet a lot of new faces. So, yeah, it was really cool starting that game off. Yeah, so the All-Star Draft, it was the first of its kind, switched up the format this year. You were the first overall pick in the first ever draft, George Goldstein picking you, and about 14 of your other teammates, it seemed like, with the amount of guys that were on the Lake Monsters. What was it like being on Team Goldstein and playing at the All-Star Game this past Tuesday in New Britain? It was an amazing experience. It was ran so well. Um, I had a really fun time, everybody. The vibes were awesome. Um all the guys got to meet. We all got there really early because there was the scout day beforehand. So we had a long day together. And by the end of the day, everybody was just best friends and having a great time and enjoying themselves. And yeah, what is that like at All-Star Games? Kind of interacting with guys who you may not interact with outside of a Futures League All-Star Game in the middle of the summer. Guys that you may, you, honestly, you may never play against again, but you, you know, you're spending the day with and you're going to be teammates with for a couple hours on a random Tuesday night. It was a lot. It just reminded me a lot of the showcases and camps I used to go to in high school when I was still getting recruited. You just show up and you just talk to the first person you see and then it ends up it's just a domino effect and going down the line and you just have a good time. You just be yourself and everybody ends up getting a lot closer, even though they may not even see each other again. So it's a cool, it's cool, cool experience meeting new people and um, 
yeah, everybody's great. I mean, we play, all play baseball, so that's one thing in common already. So it's easy to just kick things off. Yeah, of course. And how do you think the All-Star game itself kind of helped in terms of exposure for you and for the other guys that play in this league? I think it was awesome. Um, it was great. I mean, it was all the top players in the league. So playing against each other one-on-one -on -one and uh, really battling it out was – I think it's good for uh, – for the, not only the league, but all the players, like you said, uh, for exposure, just because you get to compete against the best. And that's always important. And that's always what you strive for is to be able to compete against the best. So, Yeah. And speaking of the best, you are our league leader in strikeouts with 68 and ERA at 161. How have you felt this season with, of obviously with those stats coming out of your spring at Harvard? Uh, I felt great. Um, now the team, the team I'm on, it's it's pretty easy to feel comfortable on the mound whenever I get up there because I know we're just there's going to be so much support behind me, uh, defensively and offensively. But um, it's been really it's been pretty cool uh, having the success that I've had, and uh, my coach has been really really uh, helped me through it. He 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 calls games, and I'll shake him off maybe once or twice a game, but usually we're on the same exact page. So the rhythm's going, and uh, I'm able to to just throw and go out there and be comfortable on the mound and confident because I know what's behind me. And one unique thing about the Vermont Lake Monsters is the amount of veterans you guys have on the team. Jimmy Evans, uh, George Goldstein, Wyatt Cameron. What have, you, what have you taken from those guys and learned from those guys about the league and applied that to your play every day? Uh, I really learned a lot early on about how to handle, like, we obviously have big crowds and a lot of support and it seems like there's a lot riding on the season automatically just right off the bat because of how many people show up to our games and how many people support us. So obviously there's a little bit of pressure there, but the guys were just really just like, just be comfortable. Just be you. It's summer ball. Like you should be having fun. That's, that's a good, a good priority to have. And if you're having fun right now and everything, everything kind of comes together and you start winning. So they uh they were helpful through the beginning and they they've obviously been mentors through the rest of the season and have helped me out a lot. Yeah, the support at Centennial Field over the last two years has been amazing for the Lake Monsters in the Futures League, and that all seems to culminate whenever a, a big promotional night comes up. And August fourth is the final hot dog hysteria night, twenty five cent hot dogs. You a big fan of that? I am. I am awesome. I know they sold something like four thousand hot dogs the other night or something crazy like that. Um, so it's really cool. Obviously the energy at the stadium is unbelievable on those promotional nights. And, uh, so I'm just, I'm excited. It's, it's always fun. The promotional nights. Yeah. Besides the hot dog night, what other promotions are you always excited for? Or do you like to see? Cause I know they do a lot that are every game. So like, which one's your favorite? So I would say the star Wars night was awesome. That was really cool. That was really, really cool. Uh, we got to wear these cool jerseys. They brought in the, uh, characters people were dressed up and it was really cool and um after that i would say any july 4th game because the stars and stripes jerseys that we have so that one that one would be fun too just because of the swag we get that's awesome and then taking it back a little bit how did you end up in vermont what was the, your recruitment process like to the lake monsters so in the fall when we were deciding summer leagues with uh, my coaches at school um they suggested vermont as one of the teams and they said there's guys that we trust there and guys that we like so I was I was 100% in immediately if I knew that my coaches trusted them and uh, they were obviously right we've had guys in the past play here we had two players last year Chris Clark and Porter Jordan so that we already I already knew it was going to be a great experience so I was 100% in right off the bat because of my coaches trust and the uh, experiences my other teammates had. Yeah, some Harvard connections there. Chris Clark, the one that threw that final pitch to give Vermont the title last year. Have you talked to those guys at all about what Vermont was like when you found out you were going there? Yeah, I did right away. And they said it's not, they just, both of them said it was going to be an unbelievable experience just because of the support that we have. They, uh, they talked about the baseball a little bit and the coaches and how much they love them, but it was just the first thing they said was it's crazy. The, the support we have from the, the city of Burlington and the, the fans that come to every game. So they, uh, they definitely hyped it up for me and they were right. Yeah. And you also have Morgan Brown there, director of baseball mm -hmm. ops for both Lake monsters and Vermont. So that, that's a pretty good guy to trust right there. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Trustworthy. 
Yeah. You've talked about your coaches and the trust that they, that you instill in them. And one of those coaches obviously is your manager, Pete will plenty of experience coaching at the collegiate level. What has he taught you about, you know, baseball and, and again, like summer ball, like you've said. We actually had a short practice the other day and there was three or four things that immediately I was like, wow, I never thought about that. Those are great points. And I honestly think he's been around the game so long that I learned something every day or at every, every practice or every extra work that we have because of his experience and what he knows. Um, and it's just, it's been really cool playing for him. And he always seems to have the right, make the right call in the, uh, in the hard situations. So he uh, like, whether, whether it be pitch, bringing a pitcher in to the bullpen or putting a pinch hitter in, it always seems to work out. So I have a hundred percent trust in him. It's, it's awesome knowing that you can trust a coach just completely. Yeah, it's always important to have that trust for sure. Hold on, we'll get right back to Back to the Futures, but first, we want to share a message from our friends at 78 Sports. Do you have kids playing baseball or softball? We all know practice time is limited, especially here in New England, not to mention the cost of lessons and cage time can add up very quickly. Save yourself time and money by giving your kids what they need to work on their game at home. Our friends at 78 Sports can help you put together the perfect at-home training setup. Whether you want to start small with just a tee and a net, are looking to set up a full cage with turf and a pitching machine, they have you covered. And I've used their stuff before. I've seen their facilities. They definitely cover everything. The team at 78 Sports design and install hundreds of at-home and commercial sports training facilities. So let them help you find the perfect setup for your space. Visit the 78 Sports website at 78sports.com. That's S-E-V-E-N-T-Y, the number eight, sports.com. For a limited time only, by just mentioning Back to the Futures, you'll receive a 10% discount off your order. That's S-E-V-E-N-T-Y, number eight, sports.com. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Now, transitioning to Harvard, you entered your first... You ended your first season with 49 strikeouts, to just 17 walks and 42 and a third innings pitched. How did you feel coming out of your freshman year, or excuse me, first year at Harvard? Uh, I felt, I felt pretty good. I, um, I was happy with how the season ended. I had a couple starts that I did well in and um, the team, the team seemed to just bond, but we were brothers by the end of the season. So that was amazing. Um, I felt pretty good about my, my stats. I was, Disappointed we couldn't take home a ring, but I think next year's we got a good chance. So that that's always most important is taking home that Ivy League championship and winning the thing. And um, so I'm excited for next year. I'm really pumped. There's a lot of work to be done for for the team, and I really think that the guys all summer have just had this chip on their shoulder because we know what we can do, and we uh, we think we can execute it next year. Yeah, and of course you are at Harvard. It's no secret that it is one of the highest instant highest class institutions in the country so what is it like to not only play baseball there but also attend school there it, it's it's honestly unbelievable i uh i'm surrounded by some of the smartest people in the world and it's just the the friends i've been making and the the professors and the, the teachers that uh, that i learn from and talk to every day it's just it's the school uh, school sports balance is just really it's amazing and Honestly, it's, it was everything I was hoping for when I when I committed. Yeah, we've had a couple of guys come through the Futures League over the last couple of years that have attended Harvard, Logan Bravo, Ben Rounds, and Chris Clark. And whenever I talk to them off the field, it seemed like it was a similar thing. Like it's, you know, everybody says, oh, it's Harvard, but like actually being a student there, it's got to be incredible. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's definitely, I'm, it's obviously a lot at some times, but uh, if you work hard and get ahead of things, you can still focus on baseball and school at the same time. It's not like I have to take my mind off of one or the other. It's just, it's always both. And it's important to focus on both just because there's a reputation we have to hold that by being Harvard students and baseball players. Um, definitely that's a good dynamic and the team's very supportive on and off the field. So. Yeah. Very supportive indeed. And one thing about you that's unique is you are listed as both an infielder and a pitcher at Harvard. So how often do you play in the field and hit at the plate? And is there an Otani like career in your future? What, what's the deal with that? Um, so I, I think I got 15 at bats at school this year, uh, just DH. I uh, was focused on pitching. Um, yeah, they're def I definitely, I'm definitely planning on two in the future. Uh, I don't want to stop anytime soon. It's obviously, it's too fun. It's a pitcher's dream just to, continue to hit and I, I 
love doing both. And I think that I can do both at this level. So I'm excited to see what the future holds. I can't tell you right now what's going to go on in school exactly with next, next year's lineup, but I, uh, I'm definitely going to be working as an infielder and pitcher in the fall and practicing. And we're, we're loaded with studs on, in the lineup. So I don't know if I'll get on the field anytime soon, but uh, I'm excited to see. Yeah, you were the 14th ranked shortstop and 15th ranked pitcher out of Pennsylvania in high school. So I think there's a little, yeah. it's leaning, it leaned one way a little bit, but we're happy to have you as a pitcher here in the Futures League for sure. Have you thought about playing the field or batting in the Futures League at all? Or is that, or are you just pitching this summer? Oh, uh, I've had a few at bats here, just, just pinch hit. And I actually started one game in the field. Um, the focus is on pitching here. Uh, we have many hitters that need to get their work and it's almost, it would almost be taken away from them if coach had just hit me over a guy that's a primary third baseman or a primary first baseman. So um, he's also focused on, there's no, the, I got, there's a lot of work you have to put into pitching throughout the week and obviously a lot of work on the day of. So the body goes through a lot and he, uh, coach Wilk thought it was best to focus on pitching and that was the primary focus and um, dedicate myself to that. Uh, and try and if the field had to get in the field and they needed me in the field, I could do that. But it just the risk of injury kind of goes up as well. But um, I'm taking BP every day. I'm taking my infield reps uh, pregame, so I'm still getting my work in just in case I get the call. Yeah, last thing you want to do is injure yourself playing a position that you weren't technically signed up to play during the summer. That would be that'd be a tough that'd be a tough bid. Plus, come on, they need your arm for playoffs, so you can't yeah. you can't be throwing that off. Before we return to Back to the Futures, we want to share a message from our friends at Zorian Back Company. Rob Zorian started the company Zorian Back Company in 2003, literally out of the trunk of his car in Davie, Florida. Within two years, he was selling his wood bat line to Major League Baseball and continues to manufacture the highest grade wood bats for Litter League all the way up to the majors. Rob Zorian, founder and president of Zorian, says, I started the company in 2003 to service all baseball players in the United States and beyond. And after 19 years, our mission has not changed. We are very excited to have the opportunity to work with the Futures League and wish all of our players and coaches a healthy and successful season ahead. For more information about Zorian, visit their website, zorianbats.com. Zorian, America's baseball brand. Now, back to Back to the Futures. And going back to Harvard for a minute, what was your recruitment like to Harvard? How did you end up landing there? Obviously, such a pristine school and a great baseball school as well. So what was your recruitment like to Harvard? So I went to their camp. The big thing for me in high school was going to the camps of the schools that I was interested in. And um, I went to the camp in the summer before my junior year. And I, uh, I wasn't at the level that they, uh, that they were probably wanted. So I, I didn't really hear back from them then. I, I loved the campus. I loved the school. Um, I loved the coaches. And that was really like my step into the door. I was like, this is amazing. I'm going to, I'm really going to, um, go after this and try to make the and I went back in the winter to a camp and I uh had improved a little bit and my velo was up on the mound and uh I was a little bit stronger so I uh, got an email after I went to the camp and they obviously started phone calls and um it was just surreal the whole experience knowing that I was on the co on the phone with the coach from Harvard and uh it was during COVID so it was a little bit more difficult uh, they were supposed to come out and they never actually got out to any high school games, but uh, I was sending them video left and right. And I was starting to go to tournaments at the end. And um, yeah, I committed right before June of uh, my junior year. And I, um, it was just right when I got the phone call, he said, uh, if I remember correctly, he was like, I'm not sure actually exactly what he said, but he, I remember him asking and offering and I offering a spot. And I was like, absolutely I didn't hesitate it was it was immediate I, I knew exactly where my heart was and it was amazing my family shed some tears of happiness and we were all hugging and uh yeah that was that that's awesome did you always know you wanted to play Ivy League yeah actually so my mom she went to Yale uh she played field hockey and softball so I grew up in a family with a mom who was an Ivy Leaguer and uh my dad he was always always telling me grades my mom also grades 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 and so the Ivy League was definitely something that was part of the plan, if uh, if possible. And it ended up, I uh, ended up being able to end up at an Ivy League school. And one thing you just touched on is you were 
part of the recruiting process during COVID, during 2020, you played for a couple of scout teams, as it says in your bio at Harvard. And you also said that you had to send video in because um, colleges couldn't come, you know, visit you at school. So how difficult was that trying to get recruited during such a difficult time? It was, I wouldn't say it was that much different from the regular recruitment process that before COVID, just because the video was very common and all that into the coaches was a normal thing, but it was difficult in the beginning finding places to get the video because obviously my high school was locked down. I wasn't able to, all the gates were locked. We weren't allowed on the fields. Um, so I, I actually, my dad and I built a cage in our backyard and a mound just because we weren't sure how long it was going to last. And uh, that was definitely some hard work. I would say my dad probably spent some more time on the mound at night just working on it because it was his project and he loved it. But uh, we got that done and I got to send some video in and I got took ground balls on the street. So we, uh, it was difficult, but we got it done. It, it worked out. Yeah, the odd home remedies seemed to always work during COVID for whatever, for whatever it was. So that's awesome. And your family, as I mentioned, I wanted to come back to this, and I do. Your parents both played college sports. Your dad played baseball at Delaware. Your mom, you mentioned she played field hockey and softball at Yale. What have you learned about them being college athletes, and especially your mom, who was an athlete and a student at the Ivy League level? I definitely learned a lot, uh, a lot of lessons along the way on how to balance both sports and academics and um, excel at both. And my sister's actually high-level Division One athlete, and she, uh, I learned a lot from her along the way as well, especially in the recruitment process. Obviously, this different sport, but always rhymes a little bit. And, um, yeah, so I've just been surrounded by support and experience my whole life, and it's really been – I've been lucky to, to have both. Yeah, you mentioned your sister, Erin, who is at North Carolina and has won three national titles for field hockey. How much is she going around the house bragging about that? Not at all. She's, she's the most humble person in the family, even though she's, she's the most successful probably. So it, it's, she's amazing. I, I've learned that's a big thing that I've learned from her is just to really be humble and just, just not, not uh, be cocky when you're playing the sport. And she, uh, she may be a little too humble at some time. So I'll brag about her for her, but um. Yeah, she's uh, she's amazing. It's, it's awesome to be around her, and I really learn a lot from her. Yeah, that's awesome to have a sister there to, you know, help you through your recruitment process, but also teach you all about, you know, college sports and being an athlete in college. So that's that's good to have right in the household for you. Absolutely. So you grew up in Pennsylvania. You went to Union Unionville High School. You set a single-season K record there with 51 and helped set the team record at 176. What was your high school experience like? It, it was awesome. Obviously, I uh, didn't have many, many seasons. I uh, lost my uh, junior year, which was unfortunate. And um, so that stunk. But senior year, really, we all really made the most of it. There was uh, there were seven of us, I believe, senior year. And we all just told the, we told all the young guys, we were just like, let's just try to have the best season that we've ever had. And in the end, we really did have one of the better seasons in Unionville history. We ended up hosting one of the playoff games. Uh, we didn't make it very far, but it was it was a fun experience, and the guys all really, really milked the uh, last season that we had because we understood that it it really does end, and you know we missed the one season, so that that really hurt, and it just everything was amplified the last year, and we all made the most of it. Yeah, it's a great way to go out, especially with the amount of seniors that you said you had, and that it, it's got to build those memories while you can, right? Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of memories, we're going to ask our Zephyr question of the day here. It's presented by Zephyr, the official on-field hat of the Futures League. Zephyr, high quality, innovative design since 1993. The Zephyr question of the day is, what is your favorite all-time baseball memory? Oof, that's that's a tough one. Um, uh, it's it's hard, to, hard to make it one, but I would say... I would say West Palm Beach, uh, which was the uh, the world world championships for perfect game. That was that was an amazing experience. I was surrounded by such such amazing players, and I met a lot of new guys that week. So that was just a really fun experience. I would say that whole week is my favorite baseball memory, just because the amount of fun I had. 
Yeah, that is cool. How did you end up getting into that? Uh, so I played for uh, Tri-State Arsenal um, back home, just the, the, the tra travel squad around me. And they had a scout team that went down there and I got invited to play for that team for the week. And it was a, it was a really fun experience. Yeah, that's great getting that experience in West Palm, Florida, as you said, with a lot of great baseball talent. So uh, that's a good experience. And our final question here for this episode, obviously, we talked about it off the top. You guys are vying for the one seed. You've already clinched a playoff spot. Obviously, the goal is a ring. What are your expectations for the rest of the season? Just like you said, a ring. That That is our expectations. Our team wants nothing less than than the, the highest thing you can get. Um, so... Uh, we're going to keep playing how we're playing. We're not going to get tight. We're just going to stay comfortable. We've been, we've been playing, playing well all season. So I don't expect it to stop anytime too soon, especially with the, uh, the brotherhood that we have and the talent that we have. So I'm excited to see what, what, what happens at the end of the year. Yeah. The chemistry is off the charts. The Lake monsters are rolling are very, very close to that one seed. And it's going to be a great futures league playoffs coming up here in just a couple of weeks. The 2022 Most Outstanding Pitcher in the All-Star Game, Sean Matson. Thank you so much again for joining me today. Best of luck with everything, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. And this has been Episode 10 of Season 5 of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures League. We have new episodes coming out every Monday. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see everyone soon. Thank you.